Hi everybody, Pete Meyer, Motor Rage Magazine. Welcome to another edition of In the Workshop. Today's topic is chassis and suspension. And if you're going to talk chassis and suspension, very few names rise to the top real quick. One of them is Moog. Moog's been around a long, long time, and of course they know steering and suspension. Uh, and not just one special guest on this episode of In the Workshop, we have three. So let me start off by introducing the folks from Moog who are joining me today, and we'll start with Mark Boyle. Mark, welcome to the program. Hey, Pete, great to be with you today. As I say, Mark, you um, are... I'm the Director of Steering and Suspension for North America for Federal Mobile, located here in Southfield, Michigan. Okay, and uh, what, does that, what does that entail? I'm responsible for uh, the product management side of the business, working with the engineering teams and all the different uh, segments and functions within the business, working with our sales force, working with our customers, making sure that we're putting uh, the best product with innovative ideas out in the marketplace. Awesome, awesome. And next uh, on the list is Larry Hodrick. I get that right, Larry? Yeah, Pete. That's and correct, Pete. Hey. Pete, I'm an engineering designer here for uh, Moog Steering Suspension at the uh, Moog Engineering Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, my primary responsibility is as a designer and also a uh, product evaluator of all of our uh, complete assemblies. Okay. And certainly last but not least, James Elterman. You're also up there in uh, St. Louis, right James? Yes, that's right Pete. And I'm the Innovation Manager for Moog Steering and Suspension Products. I work with the customer service and sales teams to identify common problems that our technicians or car owners might be experiencing. And then I work with product engineering to help develop innovative MOOC solutions. Awesome. And I guess that's going to kind of lead us right into the next topic. You know, Mark, Moog has always been known as an innovator, a problem solver in you know, the chassis and steering you know, market. They're the leader in, in that market. Uh, what are some of the characteristics that, that makes Moog you know, number one in the chassis industry? First of all, Pete, Moog has been the predominant chassis parts brand in the aftermarket since 1911. This leadership can be attributed to our unique focus on engineering parts, specifically for the frontline professionals who are repairing the vehicles every day in the bay. That's also why Moog is known in the aftermarket as the problem solver. Our engineers apply innovative ideas and technologies to solve the problems that cause conventional parts to fail. And we also create products that are easier to install in the repair bay for the technician. Yeah, and that engineering leadership that you guys have shown for so long, you're not just restricting that to chassis to steering, are you? I mean, you're, you're expanding that into new product areas, I understand. Yeah, that's right. We've had a lot of exciting uh, product line extensions here in the past few years. You know, Federal Mobile has long been a manufacturer of uh, full range steering and suspension and also driveline products. And uh, over the past uh, few years, we've extended the Moon Brand's problem solving approach into each one of these product areas. So technicians can now rely on Moog for wheel hub assemblies, we've launched a complete line of strut assemblies, uh, universal joints are very strong in the Moog brand and we continue to extend the brand in other categories going forward. So Larry, you're an engineering designer, you're the guy that comes up with the, the ways to solve problems that techs are, are suffering in the field. And I gotta tell you, I spent 35 years working on cars, I've installed a lot of chassis parts, and I always like the fact that a lot of the Moog brand parts made you know, installation easier, they, they took care of fitment issues or, or OE issues that you know, the original part had. You know, what are some other innovations, how, other examples that you give us about, uh, about how that problem solver approach, you know, helps techs in the field. Well, Pete, what we do is uh, here at the engineering center, we get a when we get an OE sample and, and we look at a vehicle, we're going to take the te technician's viewpoint of this. Uh, we're going to look at that OE part and uh, we're going to determine how we're going to make that part easier to install, uh, make it last longer, and how it's going to solve any problems. Uh, some examples would be. Uh, they have an OE's using a uh, lock nut, uh, which can be difficult to get the taper to lock into the knuckle. Uh, Moog will use a slotted nut and a powder pin, which will make it easier to install. 
maybe on a ball joint instead of putting a grease fitting in a cover plate, let's put the grease fitting at a side angle. So when that tech has to service that vehicle, it's easy access to get new grease into that ball joint. A third item would be, well, let's incorporate our gusher bearing all metal design, which will make that part long lasting and prevent any comebacks. Now, I actually have an example that you guys forwarded over to me on what that means. When I first heard that term, you know, gusher bearing, I'm like, what the heck is that? But they sent me this really neat example of it. Let me kind of prep that tool, that little demo unit, and I'm going to show that, see if I can get up close there to the camera, and then guys can see that, and look at that. Look at that. You got it going? What up? You got it operating there, Pete? Yeah, so explain that to me. Yeah, what you got there is you got a final hard bearing, yet porous, and what you can see is that grease can penetrate that bearing, and in service, when that product is lubed, that bearing continuously feeds grease to the mating surface I'm sorry, to reduce the friction and provide a longer life part. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Now, how does that compare uh, on the original parts of many vehicles um, to other so-called OE type designs that are available in the aftermarket? Yeah, when you get it, when you get into the OE or, or other suppliers, uh, a lot of them will use just a uh, one piece uh, polymer plastic bearing. Um, the socket will be non-serviceable. Um, when you get into a lot of uh, severe duty and, and uh, conditions and whatnot, that, those, those type of parts will not hold up uh, long term uh, like a move part that, that's serviceable and, uh, and, and will last a lot longer. Yeah, so you're looking at a part generally, it's like anything else. You know, you get, number one, you get what you pay for. Uh, but it sounds like move right. takes a lot of time into making sure that you know, the part's not only going to solve the problem that the OE part had, but it's going to provide equal or longer life than what the OE part had. And that's an important consideration when you're, when you're doing this for a living. You know, yes, the, the cheaper part might take care of the problem today, but you know, three months down the road, if you're doing the job again, that's not very helpful. That's not good, that's correct. So now we're gonna bring in James. He's the innovation manager at the St. Louis Center. And, and we just finished talking to Larry about the engineering side of the gusher bearing. And let's show that one more time so you can see that. That's just so cool. Uh, but James, what what's the significance in terms of innovation of, with the gusher bearing? Well, the primary benefit of the gusher bearings is the durability. Now, in an in an OE or an OE style aftermarket part, you're typically going to have instead you're going to have a plastic bearing, and those parts are typically loop for life. And the problem with that is if there gets any there's any debris that enters that socket, the debris really works like sandpaper on the bearing. If you've got a plastic bearing, the debris is going to erode that bearing really quickly and introduce looseness into that socket. You're not going to experience that with a gusher bearing. It's more durable. And it also is constantly flushing debris away from the bearing surface. What? Another consideration is that plastic bearings are hydroscopic. And that means that they absorb any water that gets into the socket. And in turn, what that causes is rust on the ball of the stud. And then again, you can imagine that rusty ball, again, working like sandpaper on the bearing. And if you've got a plastic bearing, again, it's going to wear that bearing out real quick. The moot parts don't experience those problems because of our gusher bearings. And I guess this would be kind of an interesting place to note. We don't, we're not trying to point fingers at the OE because Ferromogul does a lot of work for the OEs and, and across their product line. You know, they know what's involved in the designs and so forth. But when it comes to building a run of a million, two million cars, uh, it's, it's a trade-off, isn't it, between uh, how long the part will last and do its job versus the cost of putting that part on the car. Right? Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, the OE part is designed for a brand new vehicle. Sure. And they have specific considerations with regard to the warranty and the typical use for that vehicle. But as soon as you start to get into a more severe duty use for the vehicle, you need, and, and the needs of the typical aftermarket customers and the installers, you need to look for a moved part to give you those additional benefits. Right. And then uh, just another quick example that comes right to mind, ball joints that are pressed in. I know, Moog, you, you guys knurled the, the, the mating hub, right, the, uh, the 
the mating section of the of the ball joint so that it accounts for any wear that might be in the hole that's left over from the old joint. Yes, that's right. And in many cases that can save the the shop or the owner from replacing the arm that that's pressed into. Right, absolutely. The, the original equipment part's just designed to receive the part one time. It's not re really designed to receive multiple parts. Right, and guys, and you've seen this, if you've replaced the ball joint on a part, on a car that maybe has had it done once or twice, uh, you take the snap ring off and the joint literally falls out of the control arm. So, I mean, this is just some of the innovation that goes behind what Moog and the team at Moog is doing. And what, I guess there's something else really cool, James, that you sent me. It's, it's a sway bar link that you just guys just came out with. Uh, and I, boy, I've installed a bunch of these things. Uh, but this has some really neat features about it. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about, uh, about this new sway bar link kit? Sure, Pete. Well, I'm sure you, you've installed these bolt-style sway bar links before, and I'm oh, yeah. sure you know that they can be frustrating to install sometimes. Holding everything in uh, place? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the typical bolt-style links, when you go to install them, what you find is that you really have to compress the suspension and get those bushings compressed just to get enough thread exposed beyond that last washer to get that nut started. Oh, yeah. It can be really difficult. Yeah. So we identified that problem, and we've designed an innovative solution. Our bolt-style bolt sway bar links include a, a one-inch long barrel nut, and the barrel nut reaches down into the, that last bushing and grabs the thread, and it makes installing it much easier. Yeah, I'm just kind of showing the guys here how that works. I mean, check that out. You know, like like J uh, James was just pointing out, you know, you got this stud. You got to try to compress it all down so that you get those first few threads. This is really nice. And then there's something else that's pretty cool there. I like what you guys did with the bushings themselves. That's right. And just like all new parts, they're designed to be very durable. These new bolt style sway bar links are just the same. We use premium polyurethane bushings. And these bushings, they're much more durable than typical rubber or plastics that you'll find on other suppliers' products. And we also use a grade 8 bolt for strength and an anodized T6 aluminum spacer to resist corrosion. Yeah, and I love how, uh, and I'm kind of showing that too, how the bushing is lit to help keep the washer in place so that you can get yeah, everything right. put into place. And then again, you've got that, that uh, extended length shoulder to get started on the threads to make that installation easier. And I guess there's got to be a benefit too, because I mean, this, this shoulder is pretty significant. That's got to help with the strength as opposed to just the nut. Yes, it does. Yeah, overall, in our, in our laboratory testing, the durability is significantly better than anything else offered in the aftermarket. And then the last thing I kind of want to point out on this is that the, the sleeve itself has got a, I mean, it's, it's designed for a wrench. It's not just a round collar, you know, that gives you very little to grab onto. Um, all in all, I mean, a lot of the things that, that I would have said, boy, I wish the sway bar link had this, this, and this, you guys have done. Uh, and I guess that gets from feedback from the field. I guess, Mark, you're probably the one to ask you know, about how you guys come up with some of these innovations. You know, Pete, everything really starts in our engineering center in St. Louis. Um, Federal Mobile has a really unique facility that is one of a kind, actually, in our industry. And uh, at this facility in St. Louis, we house our tech line for all product lines, training, we have a uh, working uh, garage in, in St. Louis in this facility. We also have our customer service there. But what really makes it unique for Moog is that, that our engineering team, um, including Larry and James, um, uh, they reside in St. Louis as well. So what's unique is we get over 350,000 calls per year on our tech line. Wow. And 
you know, these are calls that are coming in from installers and professional technicians every day. And so they they call in and maybe we get a particular question, opportunity, issue with a particular part or application. The tech line then can relay that information over to engineering and say, hey, you know, we got three calls this week, you know, on this uh, OE ball joint. We think that something might be happening there. So they bring the engineers, bring in the vehicle, they analyze it. We see uh, maybe where the opportunity is to make a problem solver, and then engineering does their magic, and uh, we release a uh, problem solver part for Luke. You know, so I guess that that facility works really well. Yeah, and I think that's one of the characteristics that I've learned since I made the move to this part of the business. You know, a lot of companies, of course, Federal Mogul is is, is one of the biggest. Um, what I guess what do you call them, the full service manufacturers, I think is what the industry refers to you guys as, and others like you, I mean, that have that involvement with the uh, end users, if you want to call them that. You know, I personally hate the term installer, <laughs> but professional techs, you know, the world over, you know, they, um, they like the fact that they can come to the source of the component to get that help, get that training, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a little bit. Okay. Now, Mark, I know that the Sway Bar Link Kit is a fairly new product release for Moog, but I've seen the list of applications. You guys are already covering a lot of very popular vehicle choices, aren't you? Yeah, Pete, we have um, great coverage uh, across these 18 new part numbers that we released. They fit uh, millions of vehicles that are out on the road, um, ranging from the Dodge Ram to the to Mazda applications. We have Nissan applications, Chrysler Neon, Ford Explorer. So basically a full range of applications where sway bar links are used at the OE level. Well, Mark, we've, we've heard you tell us about how the engineering department gets feedback from technicians out there in the field. But there's something else I know that you guys get a lot of R&D from. I see it every Sunday. I mean, I'm only a few miles from the home of Sprint Cup Racing and NASCAR over there at Daytona. I see the Moog sticker on the cars. I mean, that's got to be more than just a way to get your name out in front of the public. Yeah, it really is. And it's much more. It dates back to the earliest days of NASCAR Grand National and Cup Racing. And the multiple generations of cup teams have relied on Moog uh, steering and suspension parts and the engineering behind that to help win races and season championships. And in fact, every cup series champion since David Pearson in 1966 has driven to victory on our Moog parts. The value of this partnership also comes through what we learn by developing and testing the latest designs that our engineering team down in uh, St. Louis develops and the technology. And all this happens in the heat of a cup race. There's a ton of banging going around in the race. Drivers are doing everything they can to gain an advantage when they're running at 200 miles per hour. Our parts stand up to this punishment. They take a beating. And there have been a number of cases actually where drivers have gone on to win the race after being involved in a serious accident. And we feel they've done that because our parts didn't break. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and there's a difference if you're, if you're not a NASCAR fan, you don't really get it, but there is a huge difference between, you know, one of the uh, super speedways uh, or a short track or even some of the road courses, the lows, the, the, punishment that these parts take, not just the chassis and steering, but the whole car. you got to learn a lot. And Larry, you're an engineer, so what kind of feedback, how valuable is that to you guys for, for carrying that, that information over to what we put on someone's car? Well, Pete, uh, first and foremost, we have a uh, director of motorsports, uh, Tim Nelson, who's uh, in daily contact with these teams. And the feedback that we get from the track, our design for the passenger cars and light trucks utilize the, the same metal-to-metal -metal, uh, bearing design, uh, the full ball stud, the bellow washers, just like they're using on the racetrack. And we figure if it, if it can handle the bump and grind of NASCAR, uh, it'll be great for the everyday use. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. And I think something else that, that's really cool about what Moog does with their NASCAR involvement, you know, the, the, the racers, the drivers, they get all the attention. You know, but those crew chiefs, the ones that are on the other side of the wall, uh, as Larry mentioned earlier, getting those little bits and pieces in place to help their driver get an edge, 
Well, you guys recognize that, don't you? You have something called the Problem Solver of the of the Race Award. Yeah, the key term here is problem solver, Pete. You know, when you're watching a couple races um, on television, you might not fully understand all the incredible work that's taking place, you know, behind behind the wall in pit road. You know, where crew chiefs are trying to find the right steering and suspension setup to put their driver out in front. And they keep solving these problems lap after lap because track and weather conditions change throughout the race. Now, Moog offers up the Problem Solver of the Race Award, and that is presented to the crew chief whose car posts the highest lap time improvement from the first half of the race to the second of, of uh, each race on Sunday or Saturday night. In other words, it recognizes the guy who is the best of the best, improving his car, the chassis adjustments, and also his racing strategy. Then, Pete, at the end of the year, we honor the Moog Problem Solver of the Year. This, is, this award is given to the crew chief with the most weekly Moog Award wins. So we present him with this beautifully handcrafted, customized, three-foot-high Moog Ball Train trophy and a check for $100,000. Uh, and, and last year was really unique because there were five crew chiefs that were fighting neck-to-neck -neck going into uh, the last few races of the year. And this becomes a really big deal in NASCAR racing. Um, in fact, Tony Stewart was on stage last year to pick up the award for his crew chief, Steve Addington. Yeah, for these guys, this got to be kind of like it is for the drivers in those last 10 laps, you know, right down the wire. Absolutely. Now, in addition to the information that your guys are getting in, you also have a way of getting that information out. I mean, I mean, here at Motor Age, that's what we're all about. I mean, there's like three quarter of a million men and women who are trying to make a living in this business. They need the information they, to do the job right. And you have, have a, a website, right, called MoogProblemSolver.com that uh, has really recently gotten a, a lot of work done to make that a premier resource for, uh, for working techs. Tell us about that. Yeah, Pete, our uh, brand team has worked really hard to improve our website and to provide, you know, current information that technicians are looking for today. We have uh, all kinds of new technologies. We use technology blogs. We have our problem solver bulletins. We talk a lot about problem solvers and, and all the different information we have. Well, these bulletins are housed on our website and the technician can go out and view these, they can put them off, they can read about the problem solvers and what we do to uh, solve a particular issue that they may be having in the bay. We have Did You Know bulletins there, all the latest product information and some really cool technical videos are on the website also. A couple other things that, uh, that they've included are a blog with Tim Nelson, our NASCAR uh, representative that works with the team. So he's talking about what's happening on Sunday, what's going on out of the race, what's happening with the, the steering and suspension and the various vehicles uh, in, the, in the NASCAR race. We have a technician tip section. There's some uh, a recent video feed that technicians can get information from. And we also have a really cool vehicle diagnostic center. So on that site, uh, MoodProblemSolver.com, either a technician or a consumer can go and kind of begin the diagnosis of a problem. So if my car is pulling to the left, I can uh, go to that site, pick the, a car or truck application, uh, pick the symptom that I have, and then the site shows me what parts may be causing that problem that I'm having. That way, as a consumer, I'm kind of set up and I understand when I talk to that professional technician, uh, maybe a little more of his terms and the parts that he's referring to. Awesome. That sounds like a great resource. So guys, check that out, MoogProblemSolver.com. But that's not the only one, I think. Now, James, he's down at the St. Louis Center. James, you guys are still doing, I mean, hands-on training opportunities as well, aren't you? Yes, that's right. We offer many two to three day workshops that technicians can come to our beautiful facility here in St. Louis and learn from ASC certified instructors. And in, in the workshops, the students will learn both in a classroom and in our state-of-the-art garage. 
we have a steering and suspension service workshop that's very popular. In addition, we also offer on-site training in which our instructors, the same ones that teach here in St. Louis, they can travel to the site of the technician and offer a three-hour moot chassis training course. And finally, if neither of those options are available to you at this time, we also offer free in-depth webinars on the Federal Mobile website. And those are great. I highly recommend those. I mean, that's a lot of resources out there for us. We certainly appreciate the efforts that the Federal Mogul and Moog have put forth to make those resources available. You know, I've always known that Moog was a great source of steering and suspension components, but I got to admit, I've learned a whole lot in the short time that we've got to spend together today. Uh, and I'm sure, sure that those who watched uh, feel the same way. Let me take this opportunity to thank Larry and James and Mark for hanging out with me and sharing the Moog story. Uh, be sure you bookmark again that page, MoogProblemSolver.com. Guys, thanks so much for taking the time to, to share your expertise with us.